In this video, we are going to consider local and global variables. When we consider local and global variables, we need to consider something referred to as the scope of variables. All variables in a program may not be accessible at all locations in that program. Whether they are accessible depends on where you have declared the variables. There are two basic scopes of variables in Python, global variables and local variables. Consider this computer program here. We start off with an assignment statement, product is assigned zero, then we have a definition of a function, and then we have a sequence of instructions. If we consider the program from the viewpoint of global variables, if we look to this first line here, it says product is assigned zero, and the fact that that is declared here makes this an example of a global variable. If we look at this line, we can see that we have product equals number one times number two. Now this product is not the same as this one. This product is declared inside the definition of the function and is therefore a different product to this one. Now to us as humans that seems a bit confusing because they're both called product. But it's important to realise that a compiler, an interpreter, doesn't have any problems whatsoever distinguishing between these two that have identical names. And that's because the way in which it stores its variables, the way it's organised its internal storage. Now, we really need to be looking at stacks and heaps here, but what I would like to do is to introduce the notion of a global variable and a local variable by a much simpler idea, and that is when you see a global variable called product and a local variable called product, it's best not to refer to them by that name, product. If you're going to look at this one, call it global product. If you look at this one here, call it local product. Let's consider all of the places that product has been used. And when I say product, I mean global product. And it's been used, as you can see, highlighted here. Now let's have a look at where the local product has been used and we can see it's highlighted here. Now this local product is only accessible to the code inside the function, i.e. these lines of code. Whereas if we come to look at this product, for example, it doesn't even know about the existence of this product because we have something called lifetime to start with, which I'm going to cover in the next video. And essentially, that means that this variable here, this local variable, is only available during the runtime of this function. So when we come to here, this product is referring to this one, the global product. Before we move on, we need also to consider these here, these formal parameters. In the context of this function, they are also variables because they will receive something from the call to this particular function. And it's important to realize also that these have a lifetime. They will only exist for the duration of the execution of this particular function. Now, of course, we can see that these formal parameters are used here in the program. They're multiplied together and the result is assigned to the local product variable. Let's single step through the execution of this particular program. And we will start off with this line where the global product variable is assigned zero. And we'll see the runtime is appearing here, but nothing appears on the runtime yet. The next thing to happen is that this function will be converted to bytecode ready to be executed, but it is not executed yet. It is executed when it is called. So the next line to execute is this one here, 
and what that's going to do it's going to print this user friendly string and the value of the global variable product as we can see here there's the user friendly string and this is the value of product which was taken from this global variable product here which we can see was assigned zero the next line to execute is this one which we can see contains a call to this function this two will be passed to number one this three will be passed to number two the next line to execute is this where the two is multiplied by the three to give six and six is assigned to product now this product is the local variable product the next line to execute is this one and what it will do it'll output this user friendly string together with this product here which is the local variable product which we have just seen will be storing the value of six consequently the runtime will look as you can see here the local variable product value is six of course the next line to execute is this one and this will return the value of the local variable product and it will return it to here to this global variable product the next line to execute is this one here and it will output this user friendly string together with this global variable product which we have just seen as had the sixth return to it so when this executes what we will see at the runtime is this let's consider the runtime look at this zero here now that's the value of the global variable which was set to zero here if we have a look at this six that's the value of the local variable after this calculation was executed now if we have a look at this six we must be careful here this is not the value of the local variable but it's a value of the global variable because we had the six returned to the global variable from the function so although the product the global product started off as zero we can see it ended up as being six let's now consider this computer program here and what I'd like to emphasize it's no different in terms of execution than the one we've just been looking at let's have a look at the global variables we can see that they are here if I now turn my attention to the local variables we can see they are here and what I've done I've changed the name of the local variable from product to result why well I don't want to confuse myself why have the same name the reason I had the same name was to emphasize the difference between local and global variables we've also we can see here got the same formal parameters and this will now function exactly like the previous program so if we look at the runtime we can see that the first thing to be executed is the global variable product value before the call is zero now of course we will perform the call and it will say the local variable result is six which is exactly the same as it was before and then of course after the call we will print the global variable again and we can see that it says the global variable product value after the call is six so no difference it's just that I've used a different name inside the function definition but the key here I would still call this variable global product I wouldn't just call it product and I would call this variable local result I wouldn't just call it result let's now consider this computer program here now it doesn't make any logic sense but what I've done here I've added this print statement and you can see what it's going to output is the global variable product value is and then it's going to output what its value is and of course its value we can see here is set to zero so let's see the runtime and let's see what actually happens well you can see that this line actually outputs this the global variable product value is zero now what this tells us is that this function can get at its own local variables 
and it can also get at the global variables. Now consider this computer program. You can see I've put the function back to how it was. In other words, I've removed the print value that printed the global variable. And I've added this one here. And this is saying print this user-friendly string together with result. Now, of course, result is a local variable used in this function. So what will happen under these circumstances is shown here. And we can see we get a crash occurring. And down here it says name error. Name result is not defined. Well, it is defined. It's defined here inside this function. But that's where its scope is. It only belongs to that function. Here, the result local variable is out of scope. We cannot access it. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.